We're Sid and Mackie, and we're professional mountain bikers on a quest to race the best and most challenging mountain bike races around the globe. Today, we're headed to Breckenridge, Colorado to race the iconic Firecracker 50, which is held each year on July 4th. Mackie will be racing the full 50 miles, but I'll be tackling a different sort of challenge and racing as a co-ed duo team with Coach Mike. This means we'll each be racing one 26-mile lap while Mackie does two laps. The co-ed duo category is arguably one of the most competitive at this race, with nearly 100 teams signed up. And this is my first time racing with my coach, so it's safe to say the pressure is on. I'm actually more nervous to do a team. Well, I made a rookie error. Uh, you really need another education. So that's part of the strategy, it's like, go harder. My legs have decided that this is uh, where they are quitting on me. We finished our pre-ride. We actually only rode a tiny bit of the course because it is a 25 mile loop with 3,500 feet of climbing. We were not gonna pre-ride that the day before. Then we got our packets and yeah, there's like a giant antelope on the wall of our Airbnb. So don't mind that. I believe it is a spring buck, not an antelope. Okay, whatever that is, there's a giant one of them and it's actually like kind of creepy and I don't like it. I was eating breakfast this morning and it was definitely looking at me. Anyway, we got our numbers and then it poured rain on our heads all the way back. Now we're gonna get the bikes ready and because we got some cold, we're gonna make some hot chocolate recovery. So here's your co-ed duo team. We're discussing our strategy. Strategy, okay. Mike's going first. Yeah, I'm going first. I'm not sure why, but Sid nominated me to go first. <laughs> Very early in this discussion. <laughs> That's because Sid thought it was gonna start at seven. I did think it was gonna start at like seven in the morning. I also wanted to make sure that she got a good warm up. She actually so. did in Winter Park. I did my first like real warm up and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually more nervous to do a team than to do the 50, because I've done the 50 a couple times. I got the pacing down for that. I know what I have to do. This is gonna be a harder effort, so that's part of the strategy, it's like, go harder. The hardest part of the strategy is we have to swap the number plate. Oh. Yeah, I think this could really, like, this could be, this could make or break it. I had this elaborate plan thought up. <laughs> of like taking a piece of cardboard and making a second number plate, zip tying that to the bikes, and like having some Velcro tabs on the back of the oh. number plate and on that, and so we could just pull it off. I didn't have any Velcro in the house. Mike said Velcro, and I remembered. Snap lock. Here you go. I'm nervous about this plan. I'm gonna... Jiggle, jiggle, it folds. Oh, you guys just saved yourselves like a good couple minutes. Okay, oh, trial run, trial I'm run. Assume I'm standing like this. Yes. So I can take it and go. Okay, it's, no, that's, it takes that, a little that's more squishy. Plenty. But I could do that squishing while yeah. I was riding away. Yeah. yeah. You okay, really that's still only like need five like... minutes faster than zip ties. Now that we have finally figured out the super fast <laughs> number plate swap. Let's go back to the strategy. For Sid and I, it's go as fast as we can for 25 miles. Obviously there's some pacing that has to happen because that first climb is pretty long. How long is pretty long? It's like a 30 minute grind. So 30 to 35 minutes, what sort of wattage should I be seeing or should I not be seeing for that? <laughs> like, should what's the number that you're like, bad idea? Yeah. Anything over like 220, Bad idea, just because it's long. Oh. Now the spot right there. So this is our newest recovery toy, which 
We never had a massage gun before, but we've always really wanted one. So you called it a recovery toy and not a recovery tool. <laughs> <laughs> They're all toys in my book. We just recently got this. This is the Meback Massage Gun, and they're actually sponsoring this video, which is awesome. So huge shout out to them for supporting the channel. It comes in an awesome little case. Um, it has a bunch of different heads. Like these are the ones that I tend to use most often, but it also has a variety of uh, torture implements. One of the things I really like about it is that you have a bunch of different power setting options. So up to that. I have not used that, it is too intense. But also, you can tell how much force you are putting into your leg, or arm or whatever, and that's the colors on this side. So you'll see, as I press harder, it goes green and then green, yeah. and I can't do it and on it there. Turns, Let's go. It turns there yellow, we go. yeah, so now you're ah. going too far. <laughs> and then if you're really going too hard, I guess it would turn red, but don't do that. Yeah, I mean, it's not necessarily that you're going too hard, it's just letting you know how much force you're doing, and I've been pretty comfortable in the green range. The other thing that's really great about massage guns is that you can get into places like your adductor that are actually quite awkward and difficult to get to with a foam roller. You have to be like kind of scorpioned on the ground. So if you're someone who finds that position uncomfortable or just it's too painful to put your whole body weight on something, these are a great solution. The Meebag 3 is available on Amazon. We will include a link in the description and you can use the code Sid and Mackie for 10% off. Good morning. It is race morning and I slept terribly. I slept terribly, and I'm probably the reason you slept terribly. There might be some truth. <laughs> <laughs> I tried not to, but I just like needed to try sleeping the other way every five minutes. <laughs> and that bed is like a trampoline. <laughs> I did not sleep well either. Um, but again, it's like it's a pre-race thing. Like I don't know a lot of people that sleep awesome. The night before races. The Firecracker 50 course is known for being brutal. After starting in downtown Breckenridge at an elevation of 9,500 feet, it climbs 1,500 feet over the next eight miles, topping out at just under 11,000 before hitting the first ascent, which drops you down 800 feet first on single track, then on a dirt road to French Gulch Road in the hardest climb of the day. The top of the little French climb is the highest point on the course, breaking 11,000 feet. But it isn't the altitude that makes this climb so hard. It's the steep, loose rocks and stream crossings, combined with the altitude, that forces most people off their bikes. Fortunately, once you've reached the top of Little French, you're halfway through the lap and the rest of the course trends downhill. That's not to say that the climbing is over, you just get it in smaller pieces and it's interspersed with fun, fast single track. All told, each lap is 26 miles with 3,400 feet of climbing. You feeling ready? Guys got off okay. It is 8:53. This part kind of sucks. I have to just wait and figure out. I'm gonna try to eat more at like 9:30. Probably leave at 10:30. I'll be doing my warm up a little early, but I need to be able to give Mackie a bottle. Things started off at a fairly reasonable pace today, probably because everyone was thinking about the fact that they had 50 plus miles ahead of them. So it wasn't until the top of the initial six mile road climb where the course turned on a single track that the pro men's field started to break apart. Okay, current position 15, which is not, how I'd like this race to go. So.
Okay. I think I gotta back it down a little bit. Probably 10 or 12 miles in. So, got a long ways to go. That was not sustainable. The climb up Little French was brutal, but I pushed hard to stay with the guys around me, knowing that once we hit the top, the rest of the lap trended downhill, and if they were in sight, I could probably catch them. a good spot. Awesome, thanks man. Alright, I remember this climb from Breck Epic and it's brutal but it is the last significant climb of the lap, so that's good. The second lap was really hard for me. I had started cramping at the end of the first, a bad sign given how much racing I had left, and my legs let me know I had no choice but to slow down if I wanted to finish. So I focused on eating and drinking, and when I got passed by this guy on the road, I was able to stay with him to the single track turnoff. Okay, come on, Mackie. The descent, first descent's getting close. Let's push it a little bit here. Doesn't have to be too much, just a little bit. Awesome, great job, Mike. Good work. Have fun. Will do. There you go. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I did not realize that was how that works. Oh, hey, how's it going? Oh. For sure, let me know if I'm slowing you down. The first climb went pretty smoothly, although I definitely exceeded that 220 watt mark that Mike and I had talked about more than a few times. And I found myself hurting once we hit the single track. My heart rate skyrocketed and I was breathing like a freight train. But since at this point we are at about 10,500 feet of elevation, this wasn't a surprise. I settled in and luckily we had a fun descent coming up. Annoyingly, my GPS mount came loose about two seconds into this descent and proceeded to drive me absolutely bonkers and elicit some colorful language. Get us 
spot. Went in a rush. Thank you. Ooh. Ah, that was I've never had this particular problem before, but hey, there's a first time for everything. Well, I admit I would be real happy to just skip this next climb. Especially because I'm starting to get some uh, uncomfortable cramping. I started feeling twinges at the end of the first lap, but now we're getting a little more significant, which is no bueno has definitely got another 15, 16 miles. Scratch, please. Scratch, scratch and choose if possible. Thanks. Choose. Thank you. Hammy. Come on, Hammy. We're at just under three hours, like 2.54. And I would say my legs have decided that this is uh, where they are. They're quitting on me. Definitely getting like full leg cramps. Hamstring on both sides adductor on the right and quad on both sides so now it's just damage control try to spin it until they can recover a little bit which is hard because this is stupid french gulch and then see if we can feel a little better for the rest of the race Oh, F that climb, man. Oh. Well, I made a rookie error. I'm supposed to be scratch at the aid stations. I asked for scratch. Maybe I was not paying attention. And took it from the wrong person. But there's no way I was in this bottle. And scratch or it's mix it like 70 times the concentration oh boy and unfortunately that is my only liquid for French gulch it is yeah I'm afraid it's like noon or something nasty and like carbonated oh that's foul I don't know what that is I hate it Okay, well, live and learn. Okay, we survived French Gulch. I had to walk. The one pinch point, but this thing a lot of people did. It's very steep. I'm just taking a minute to reassess. I am very thirsty, but the more I drink, the 
like the glue ear my mouth gets. This video is not supposed to be an ad for scratch, but whatever it is, way better than what's in my bottle. These plume trails, you really gotta pay attention because it's like easy to just chill because they're like so flat. Let's see if I can make up some time on this descent because it is the most fun and most technical of the race. Although this top part's a little flat. On your left here. Thank you. Thanks. Come on, Mackie. You just got us off it for less than five minutes. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. While I had done my best to get down as much of the mystery fluid as I could, as you can see here, I didn't drink very much for the majority of this period of the race. And right about now, I was starting to feel the effects of dehydration, mainly in the form of brain fog and a bit of cramping. Okay, we might survive this after all. Come on, you got this. Come on. Focus. Deep breaths. Whatever. And my God, we are sort of going down. Definitely starting to get some cramping. Just a moment. Come on now, you can pedal through. Thank you, everyone. Almost to the final descent. I'm on saying, come on. I just have to stay upright. Smash some burns. Shortly after finishing, the effects of dehydration hit hard and I started feeling pretty sick. 
In many ways, this race was not optimal, but I do feel like I stayed mentally strong and got some good practice sitting in the pain cave. So overall, I'm happy with this performance. Good job. How'd it go? <laughs> A little hard. Had some issues. Oh no. So under normal circumstances, I would say, yeah, recovery drink. But today, because Sid didn't drink what she was given because it was gross. Um, <laughs> and, and I got a similar bottle and it was gross. Um, I'm starting with just more scratch. Okay. Hydration mix. So hydration mix so, first. Maybe one of the salty ones. So, you with want a, a wellness with that ice? That sounds good, actually. Okay, wellness yeah. with ice. That's a really good call. Get the fluids back in because she didn't drink a lot. She pushed herself really hard. So she's dehydrated. That's the number one reason she feels like crap. We survived. Excellent. Yeah. I see that. You are both here. I feel like the result was solid, considering. Yeah. There were a very many fast people racing. 12th out teams. of 80 teams? Yeah, some of them aren't done yet, so I don't know. Overall performance, like, I think was really good from Sid. Like, she's talking about numbers and uh, obviously set a best time for the year on some descent, um, which is always good we do the work to give you guys the tools to go faster uphill and you can still go as fast as you always have downhill like that's a bonus that was fun that was a lot of fun yeah i think i like the duo racing is kind of a fun element it yeah. does add a, like a cool yeah. team element mm -hmm. to racing mountain bikes and which we didn't you don't have to have. do 50 miles <laughs> yeah as i started my second lap i thought gee i should have raced as a duo <laughs> <laughs>